Okay. Today, I'm gonna do this one. Got it for Christmas, December 2020. It's now September 2021. Should really get round to it at some point. Yeah, my brother got me Gulliman for Christmas. Been wanting to paint it for a long time. Haven't trusted my skill. Now I kinda do. Really excited to paint this. Really hope that you're excited to join me while I paint this. Really hope you're gonna be present in the process. Let me know if there's anything you think I could do better. But realistically, I'm just excited to get started with this one. One of the most important things I wanna show you when you're doing this is that you can make mistakes and easily fix them. You can make creative decisions and easily go back on them, which I did during this process, you'll see it. And that you can make really awful video features and insert them in the middle, hoping that they work when they don't, but you'll see that as well. But yeah. You can fix mistakes, you can go back on decisions, and you can still turn out with a good miniature. So stick around, see the first stages of getting Gilliman painted, and hopefully we'll get it done in the next couple of weeks and you'll see the whole thing. So let me know what you think. Okay, so you can already see here that the big mistake that I made was priming these before I built them. But I did that in December of 2020, and not in 2021. It's picking, taken me nine months to get around to building this, but here we are. I was since told not to do this, and I've learned why not to do this. So all my models since then haven't been pre-primed, but it um, took me a little bit while to learn. But here we are, still sort of working on from that. There are ways that I get around this problem of pre-priming my models. Most of them involve filing, as you can see here, but there's another method that I use for the more, well, the unfileable kind of pieces, which involves just, yeah, get in nice and close. Use a craft knife to just gently scratch away the top layer of paint. You don't want to wear into the model, otherwise the joint will be misshapen, but if you can be very, very light with a craft knife, you can remove that top layer of primer and just remove it so that the plastic can be bonded more effectively whenever it comes time to build. Once I've got everything sort of filed and ready, um, I mounted these cotton buds on white tag on top of my old uh, palette, and then mounted the armor plates on top, and then got to down to building. Really, you know, you, you can see there I'm doing the scratching method again. But it's really, really straightforward. Just getting everything nice and bonded and strong. Here's what it looks like just before I started painting. Now, to test our paints, we needed a new feature. Yeah, sorry, it's a Fallout New Vegas reference for anybody who really cares, but we're gonna put testicles in an Ultramarines armor scheme today, test some colors, some different sort of experimental methods I've been looking at. None of these make it to the final model, but I got some testing done. I used this sort of sample marine that I got free from a Games Workshop store. They gave it to me to practice painting on, and that's what I'm doing. So I tried sort of combinations of purple, some Cantor blue, ultramarines colors, different blues, different purples, just to try and see if I could bring out a darker undertone to the ultramarines blue. And unfortunately, I didn't go with any of these, but we still value Testicles for his contribution to this model. And hopefully he'll come back in future, probably in different armor, just to give us some insight into color testing. But I went on ahead and I started painting, stippling the model with Cantor Blue and McCrag Blue, depending on different areas, just to get that shadowy effect that I used in the past on the other models. You can check that out up in the top right corner. Yeah, went through the Cantor Blue and then on top of that went the Calgar Blue, tried to stipple it again, give it a bit more of a lighting effect. After that, I went with the Fenris in Grey, just to dry brush highlight everything, just to see if I get that same lighting effect that I'm used to getting with my other models. I know this one's slightly different, but I thought if I went to the same approach, I would get an interesting kind of effect because this is more detailed armor. If I could catch the edges more differently, it'd be more interesting. But then I started trying to do the details with Avalon Sunset. Try to take a yellow base color like I've done with gold before, layer it down and just hopefully build some gold up off the top of it. Wasn't really too happy with this to start with, but as it went on, it gradually started to bring out those extra details and it did look pretty good. Wait, what am I thinking? It didn't look good at all. So I went back to the start, got my Cantor Blue just for that darker undercoat. Started just 
slapping it on all over the model, covering over everything that I had done, covering the highlights, covering the details, covering the shadows, covering everything. And then I just went in with the Balthazar Gold and I went mad on those details. Don't know why I ignored the Games Workshop recipe to start with, but I'm in there now, got that dark undercoat and I'm using the Balthazar Gold just to get those details in. And this is how it looks now. This is how it looks so far, just the two base coats on, the base of Cantor Blue and the base of Balthazar Gold. I'm honestly really excited to get more details done in this because with this minimal color scheme now, it looks absolutely fantastic. So, I'm really happy with that. I'm super excited to see where it goes. I've just assembled it from the two pieces you've seen there, waiting to do the head next, but, it's good to get those primary bits out of the way so we can move on to highlights and details, which we'll do next time. But I hope you enjoyed seeing how my processing worked with this and how I went back on my mistakes and sort of updated some stuff. If you think there's a better way I could have handled some of that, let me know. I'm always excited to learn, but otherwise, stick around for whatever comes next. Subscribe if you're not subscribed, like the video if you enjoyed it, Leave a comment, lots of people leaving comments, which I really appreciate. It's always good to talk to people about what's going on. Show me your paint product projects, sorry, link your videos down below. I want to see all kinds of stuff. So yeah, thank you for joining me. Really excited to get this model progressed and finished. See you next time.